Welcome again to EMTH4, Engineering Data Analysis. In this lecture, we will talk about data, specifically on obtaining data. There are various data types and the variety requires different methods to gather them. We are currently in the uh, digital age. Most people involved in the uh, information and uh, communications technology field, and uh, that should include us in the agricultural sector even, uh, refer to this age as the uh, fourth industrial revolution or fire or industry 4.0. Uh, and its implications involve the uh, democratization and more so the empowerment of uh, individuals where anyone can now easily voice out their thoughts and sentiments and be heard by more people than ever in human history. This is through uh, social media, uh, communications apps, the internet, and which leads us to this signage of fake news. With the power given to the individual, the proliferation of information and data has been overwhelming to the point the validity of this data have been compromised. Well, I started uh, with this introduction on fake news because the search for uh, the truth and reality amidst the influx of enormous amounts of data is more than ever needed by society nowadays. Uh, speech or engineers or uh, engineer and, and engineering students, you will be involved with an assortment of data for you to generate designs, develop products, and build structures in the engineering space. It is thus crucial to ascertain uh, that the tools and techniques used in the analysis of this engineering data be sound, sufficient, and satisfactory. Let us begin with what is data. Data from our introduction a while ago is information. There are also facts and figures collected, presented, analyzed, and synthesized. Data can be uh, numeric or non-numeric. There are two gener generic types of data that is being commonly used, primary or uh, secondary. Primary data is something acquired directly from its source. Secondary data is the opposite, something not directly acquired from the source. Okay, to illustrate better, uh, think of the set of the data of the ages and birth dates of students who themselves answered the online survey, asking them for their ages and birth dates. Uh, another example of primary data is the water level in meters measured in a stream or river by a water level recorder or data logger, which sends the data to an online database okay, for access by the scientists who installed the data loggers. All these data are directly measured uh, by uh, its end users. What about secondary, secondary data? An example of which, uh, of which would be a shown, okay, uh, the wind tunnel uh, uh, experiment data, which has uh, already been published in a journal or book, and which is now being used by another author, uh, yeah, author or researcher, for his computer simulations, specifically on computational fluid dynamics. The use of books in the library, what is that? Books are second resources, okay, because they're sources of secondhand information. Books are the most common source of secondary data. Again, radio, uh, television, and the internet are the newer iterations of sources of data. I, for example, as an instructor, by virtue of the lawfully vested function by the 
uh, Professional Regulation Commission, I'm also a source of secondary information uh, in the class. Now, let's go to how do we collect data? Think of your everyday encounters as we rely on our uh, senses, okay, to make decisions. We are, what? We are able to uh, survive, uh, uh, decide. Okay, similarly, data can be collected by objective or subjective means or the use of existing records. Uh, by objective means, measurement or counting is done and thus measuring or uh, measuring or counting tools or instruments are needed okay uh, from the previous example the water level data measured by scientists remotely is using a water level recorder to measure the water level at a specific time interval okay that is an objective means of uh, gathering data interviews questionnaires either face to face via telephone call or even video call they fall under the subjective means because the information is provided by uh, respondents lastly uh, use of uh, previously collected data is the use of existing records okay, the example of which is the history books written by historians who uh, write them based on first-hand or even second-hand accounts from the past. A person reading pictures is um, using the existing records because uh, while the information the pictures is carrying is false, okay, the retrieval of the person from an, from an existing collated information is data still from an existing record, although well, that data is um, compromised. Okay, so the first two means of collecting data results to primary data, while the third method, okay, results to secondary data. Sorry, um, let's go back. Okay, let us uh, proceed now to the subjective means of collecting data. There are many instruments to conduct scientific research but as engineers expected to design develop and build things to innovate on the status quo improve efficiencies and manage people and processes effectively uh, we are often concerned with observational and experimental research uh, the only other area beyond these two is conducting surveys a survey in investigates um, the opinions and personal experience of, of a select group of people using a set of questions. Okay, the questions either given in a structured or pre-format need to be carefully thought out. Uh, let us therefore list uh, attributes or criteria to make sure that the survey has been carefully thought out. First is, okay, reality, reliability. Uh, these are actually attributes for various instruments of data collection to which surveys belong. Okay, so reliability is the degree of consistency, precision, or accuracy of the survey instrument. Okay, these terms are actually self-explanatory. Number two is validity, which means that the survey instrument should be able to measure what it purports to measure or get the data it intends to collect. Okay, take note that validity comes after reliability because it can only be as valid as reliable as it can be. In other words, the limit of the, the validity of a survey is its reliability. Number three is sensitivity, which should indicate, sorry, uh, which should indicate uh, the degree of variations of responses should be integrated into the survey instrument. Okay, the sensitivity should capture the uh, variations in collected data, which often vary within and between uh, subjects and even between groups. Okay, lastly, the survey instrument uh, needs feasibility for the, the test of its practicality. 
are the skills, cost and survey, uh, cost and time involved uh, to conduct the survey available. Okay, the survey consists of questions asking opinions, perceptions, and experiences. The questions can be structured or free again, okay? So when it is structured, only one has to make a layout of a table of specifications. The table should cover all the questions relating to the research problem at hand. While free questioning, on the other hand, is, is impromptu. Okay, more, more often in engineering, uh, research involves survey questions that uh, follow a standardized structure. Well, the only advantage of free questioning is the spontaneity of the question and answer between the interviewer and interviewee, which should help in the fluidity and continuity of information. Okay, um, let's move to um, the, the questions, okay? Um, the questions of the survey. So questions should be as effective as they can be. Okay, presented here are the uh, criteria to construct questions. Number one is clarity. Okay. Uh, language structure and vocabulary should level should always suit the respondents of the uh, survey. If using even a dialect is needed, it, by all means it should be done. Number two is content and time period specificity. The question should be direct, okay, not ambiguous and confusing. An example would be the question, identify the volume of water the plant was watered the past week. Here, it is specific that the volume of water introduced to the plant in the past week uh, is being asked. It can actually be more specific, like having the interview we provide a water schedule. Number three is singleness of purpose or that one question should lead only to one answer. Uh, to provide two or more questions to in one question may be difficult for people not used to surveys. Okay, number four is the freedom from assumption. This means that a question should not be constructed so that an underlying assumption is made. Example would be, what is the volume of water provided the crops the past week if irrigation was done? Here, uh, the interviewee is already assuming that watering was done. Number five is freedom from suggestion. It should be noted that the question should not lead the interview to interview towards an end. Otherwise, the results become biased. An example for this would be, uh, would you agree that uh, watering plants thrice a day, specifically in the morning, afternoon, and before sunset, increases the food yield of the plants? This question suggests that this irrigation schedule is better than others. Okay, these kinds of questions and other beginning with a uh, dissimilar statements espousing a certain idea should be avoided. Okay, number six, but not the least, okay, is linguistic completeness and grammatical consistency. Uh, linguistic completeness should refer to the completeness of the uh, question. It should not be hanging in any way. Oftentimes, uh, it would be better to provide options to questions instead of simply asking a descriptive question. Grammatical quest, uh, consistency refers to the ability of the options, uh, the, the agreeability of the options to the questions. This is also the reason options should be given if the interviewee expects the respondents can answer variably to the questions. Okay, once the questions are done, the surveyor should uh, proceed with the next step in the survey process. That would be sampling. This step should identify the respondents in the uh, survey. Next would be data collection itself, okay, or the conduct of the survey. Fourth step would be analysis, the aggregation of survey results and the performance of appropriate statistical analysis over these results. Last would be reporting wherein data should be presented in the best condensed 
and complete form possible. We will still be going through the steps uh, four, five, and okay, in the course of the subject. Uh, so in the next lecture, uh, we will have the overview of the observational and experimental means of data collection. Until then, I'll see you.